Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, I'm going to do a little, just a little scan of the garage because both vehicles are out of here. So we'll start from scratch. This building is 10 feet tall. You can see that's a double, it's an extra tall door there than there. And it's 26 feet wide by 26 feet long. So it's 20 feet, 26 feet square on the outside. Yes, you lose some square footage on that. So I just thought I'd show you. That is my old cast iron miter saw made by Skill, S-K-I-L. And uh, those wings on that thing pop out left and right. So when you got it in the middle of the shop, you can just lay a piece down and cut it. Uh, big box of long stuff down there. That is um, like my big torque wrench, uh, hammer puller, nailed pullers, chains, right? That's actually a creeper for going under cars. It's called a uh, bonester. And just man stuff on the wall. Each little thing has a story, right? Those are my two projects that I got on the go right now. That one is going to be just a teardown. I haven't taken it outside yet. Parts corner, metal working, drill press, uh, homemade jack press. That's I think that's the coolest tool in the whole shop right there. Looks kind of like a Harbor Freight jack press, doesn't it? And then being the same height as, as the benches, I've got two bench grinders on the top. My little drill press, entertainment, spare parts, more spare parts. These are the purchased spare parts and used, some used chains and stuff, belts. I got a, just about a belt for everything and then they're not all good quality but if I can find something that fits then I'll go buy the, the, green, the green belt with the Teflon internals, right? So, grinders. Yes, they're electric plug-in, not cordless. <clears throat> and the wall of tools. Ooh, that light's shining right in our eyes, eh? Homemade welding bench. Same height as the benches. And then it's got two welders on it. A 230 amp AC welder and a uh, MIG and flux core. I just use it for flux core. I've never actually used it with MIG. Carpenter's vise. I put. I call it my carburetor vise because it doesn't chew up. It's got wood internals. And of course, the good tools go in the good boxes. Up there, drills, weed blower. That's how I sweep my floors in the garage. I just blow the crap out into the into the alley. We can do that because we have an alley. And then, like I've said before, um, small valuable parts like coils, um, rewinds, gas caps, handles. I don't have to run out to the shed every time I want to fix a handle. I can just go up there. That's the office. As I call it, the orifice. Yes, the door is not quite closed. Let's close that. Just so you know it does close, right? Nice door. Yes, I installed that. Thank you. And stuff. Mop. That mop was clean now, Hank. And my old gun rack, which now holds, I don't know, broom handles, aluminum tubes, pressure washer stuff. And the kids need a brand new pair of shoes. Even golf clubs out here. I just drained the compressor today and turned it off and the valve is open. Look at that little drain. There, just a moment please. Sorry about that. And then my stock. Jack stands, floor jack, oil, and then miscellaneous bolts in the first row. Then we start getting into uh, hooks and chains and 
casters and springs, plumbing stuff. And then up there is painting stuff, camping stuff, way up there. Doesn't get used much anymore. And then uh, my box of screws, I got that. I know it's not pretty, but I got it from my dad's. It means a lot to me. And my John Deere slash Coleman. It's got a John Deere stickers on it. But it's a Coleman 440. And then back to Trudy's garage door. And I'm down to two snow blowers now. I sold it the John Deere 24Z no. ZF, ZFR24, something like that. I sold that one. That's the one I rebuilt that had the uh, uh, lots of welding on the uh, auger. But this one's had lots of welding too. And then, of course, my I call this my land poisons, but it's mostly oil spray oils, miscellaneous. Uh, everybody laughs when I say uh, uh, methyl hydrate. Stuff like that. Oh, and then all my grease stuff's in that bottom box down here, that army box. Two grease guns, miscellaneous grease, snowmobile grease for winter, etc. So let's just do a. Well, let's just point this. It's getting brighter in here because the fluorescent lights are starting to warm up, eh? We'll just. Uh, where do we do our scan from? We're going to be shooting into the window. Oh, and a hand truck. That was one of my first things I ever welded, was that bracket. Okay, so we'll just do a slow scan from the northeast corner of the garage. It's actually a pretty good sized space. Watch out for that window there. Eh? It's bringing in a light. I'll give you another perspective. We'll do it from back over here by the entry door. Some of you guys probably know this garage as well as I do, eh? So because it's a, it's on a grade beam, they've got three stairs coming into the door, and uh, so the wall, the two by f the, the actual garage material is for an eight foot wall. So that over there is an eight foot wall from there up. I've got some hanging storage. So let's just do a, a slow scan from this end. As you guys know, I love it in here. My axe collection, they're all buffed and shiny. I put gun oil on them so they don't rust. Ooh. Furnace, my best friend, keeps me warm when it's 25 below out there. And then of course my toolboxes, full of all the same stuff you guys have, right? And I went and I labeled them all this year, right? Sockets, ratchet extensions, knives, testers, carb cleaning kits, small engine tools, air tools, soaps, funnels, containers. Up here is the big the big sockets. Screwdrivers, pipe wrenches, crimpers, metric wrenches, miscellaneous hammers, that's always a fun one, eh? Metric ratchet wrenches made by gear wrench. SAE ratchet wrenches made by gear wrench and then SAE wrenches. They're not all they're not all the same make, okay? But my metric wrenches are. And of course there's always the 18 is always missing, eh? <laughs> Punches, Allen keys. What's this one? Pliers. Some of you telephone men that used to work in the business would recognize a few of those. I actually asked when I retired, can I take my tools home? And they said, yes, 
the ones you're carrying in your tool pouch. So I just made sure the tool pouch was full. That's electrical, carpentry, automotive, These are easy outs. They could be up with the punches. And then this is left-handed drill bits in here. I finally got a set of left-handed drill bits. And then large hand tools. And this drawer is getting really heavy. That's a swage tool for uh, doing the crimps on the lawnmower cables. So thanks a lot. I know some of you were curious to see what's in here. Uh, in the shelving units, in the storage down here, it's really not that exciting, although some guys think it is. It's mostly carburetors and, a, and my uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Tecumseh carburetors, whoops, Tecumseh carburetors, Briggs carburetors, Honda carburetors, miscellaneous carburetors, Battery charger and ultrasonic cleaner and a few battery storages, eh? And then underneath this cupboard, if I can get in there, maybe I can, maybe I can't, is my big electrical tools. It's get pretty dark down there. Oh, and Steve OJ just gave me this nice, beautiful sander and sharpener whatever you want to do with it, right? So that sure is nice for grinding valves now with a square tool, eh? when you do a power tune on a flathead. So there she is. I don't think I missed much. Okay, so at the office area there, right there, below there is just uh, clean rags for cleaning glasses, fertilizer, for the lawn, believe it or not, um, I got quite a few sheets for covering tomatoes when it gets cold in the fall and I keep them in there. And then the, the sheep rejects I use to cover stuff, like I'll be putting something over that saw right after I turn off the camera so it doesn't get damaged or dusty. So there you are.